Good morning, everyone, and welcome to CPDC's spring presentation of the State of Center City Report. I want to first of all thank Romina Gutierrez and Neil Brecker, who've helped set up this uh, presentation. Any mistakes that happened this morning are mine, not theirs. They've done a great job in setting it up, so welcome again. I want to start by discussing where we were prior to this crisis and where we are now. I want to talk about the obstacles and pro prospects for recovery and try to distinguish between challenges that are related to the crisis and those that predated it. Presentation should be 20 to 25 minutes. Uh, for those who want to get out and enjoy the sun, uh, that would be about a half hour total. Uh, I'm going to follow the contents of the State of Center City report and I'll overview things by employment sector and then end with an update on CCD. You can uh, raise questions online and we'll try to take some of them at the end and answer them uh, as we go. The State of Center City report is available on our website. You can download it as a PDF or you can read it online in a book form through issue. It's a great way to read and never get a paper cut. Uh, I wanna start with the conditions that were existing in early March, 2020. We had 42% of Philadelphia's jobs concentrated in Center City. We were entering our 11th straight year of job growth. We had already added 84,700 jobs since the recession. And the first quarter of 2020, as you can see on the right, started out very strongly. Employment in Center City had steadily risen to 311,500 wage and salaried positions and another 9,500 people compensated as either partners or operating freelance. On March 16th, 2020, the stay at home order was issued. All but essential businesses were directed to close. Transit ridership dropped dramatically and the pedestrian volumes tracked by our 24 hour counters on about 12 locations in Center City dropped showing volumes dropping by about 88% compared to same time last year. Assuming we're following the national trends, all recent employment gains have been wiped out, at least temporarily. The gradual recovery that we've been on over the last decade seems to have been completely disrupted. Nationally, unemployment Trump jumped from 4% to 16%. It is probably much higher here in Philadelphia. Now we've been through a process of adjustment and we're navigating in what are clearly uncharted waters and the framework I'm presenting here, I want to thank Jim Perlstein for since he outlined this briefly on the phone call. But I think we started by pulling back, making sure that our families were safe. All of us worried, do I or do I not have the virus? And then we slowly came to terms with the disruption of everyday life. Schools and businesses were closed and we began to work from home. We started out how to figure out how to operate our businesses and organizations remotely. We scrambled to learn new com computer programs. We watched podcasts, participated in many webinars and video conferences, and read endless reports seeking to clarify the situation amid a great deal of confusion. Now we're reaching a point where we're starting to develop plans for recovery and reopening. We're planning physical changes and new operating protocols for our businesses. And there's a lot of uncertainty about when, when will we reopen, as well as which businesses will actually survive. I think a key challenge in front of all of us is trying to distinguish between the interim conditions, which are of unknown duration, which may require modest adjustments, and those conditions which become the new normal, which will require major changes. What I find is we have far too many experts at this point making definitive proclamations about the future based on today's reality, when the real answer sometimes will just have to be, we just don't know yet, but we still need to make provisional plans. So if we're gonna be ready to rebound, we need to answer some of these questions and learn to live with uncertainty about others. I would hope I'm gonna do a better job this morning than the world famous psychic who's located just down the block from our offices on Chestnut Street. But in some sense, we're all reading tea leaves at this moment. I want to use, as I said, the state of Center City as a guide for our discussion in order to take stock of our assets and challenges. Strength one for us has always been our position at the center of a regional highway and transportation network with a transit system that brought 300,000 passengers downtown each day. 
Quite simply, transit is what has made downtown density possible. With diminished revenues, there's a key question at this moment. Can SEPTA adopt new protocols and procedures to attract sufficient passengers to restore revenues while still preserving social distance? In the interim, I think we need to prepare for increased auto commuting when the recovery comes. There could be more demand for ride share and cabs. There should be increased demand for bicycle commuting, increased demand for improved bike lanes a need for more well-designed bicycle parking. In short, there are a whole lot of unresolved issues that predate this crisis. How do we think and better manage the curb lane? And are we prepared as a city to do this now? But more than ever, we will need to secure a dedicated and stable source of funding for SEPTA, and they have begun their effort to communicate now about that need. Our second core strength has been our diversity of employment. It seems obvious, but it's very important to say that we're neither Orlando, nor Las Vegas, nor Houston. All of those have been single industry towns. We have a much more diversified employment base. We have a robust mix of office, healthcare, education, hospitality, arts, entertainment, and retail. And Center City's 311,500 jobs are quite diverse. 27% pay salaries 35,000 or below, 56,000 pay in the 35 to $100,000 range, and 17% pay over 100,000 a year. 63% of downtown jobs require less than a college degree. 33% require only a high school diploma. And SEPTA has made those accessible to neighborhood residents. So 25% of the residents of every city neighborhood are employed downtown. That's 163 downtown jobs held by Philadelphia residents. It's clear that downtown's recovery is key to the city's recovery. There are also 119,500 suburban workers who work in Center City. Now, the office sector is our largest downtown employment sector. That's 40% of our jobs in Center City. 127,000 jobs. We saw steady growth in supply, rising rents, and an 87% occupancy rate at the end of last year. That included Comcast Second Tower, Aramark's new corporate headquarters, and there are several new buildings in design and poised to start construction. Similarly, there are several more buildings in University City. Now we inherit here a pre-existing challenge. If you look back at last year, just four of 30 major lease transactions in Center City were for firms moving in from outside the city. Two of them were co-working and one was the Biden for president office. So the demand for office space from out of town tenants has been very modest. So too has been rent growth. Our tax structure, as we said frequently, creates competitive disadvantages our wage and business taxes add to the cost of occupancy. Now, co-working was an easy way to test the market without signing long-term leases. We had over a million square feet of co-working space operating in Center City. And I think many people recognize that sharing desks now may be very problematic. So business retention and renewal of leases is gonna, is gonna become even more important given the lure of working. This is certainly a huge concern in, in New York City, as you may have seen yesterday in the New York Times. But with affordable office rents and housing costs, several people have suggested that this could be a moment for an attraction strategy for Philadelphia to draw tenants and workers from higher priced markets. I think the current status and questions in my conversation with a lot of developers and brokers uh, and the current situation seems to look like this. Rent collections have held up. Frankly, that's been very good for the Center City District. Our collections have been very strong and have enabled us to operate. Many lease renewals are proceeding. There's very active planning for recovery and reoccupancy. New cleaning protocols are being established by landlords and tenants. Managers and owners are rethinking elevators, redesigning common areas, looking at how to improve their HVAC systems. Social distancing and masks within the workspace will probably be the norm. Staggered work hours will be the norm. Space for employee, most people think will rise. 
There'll be more emphasis on separate offices, less on hoteling and shared desks, more partitions and safety barriers. I think the two open questions for us, the first one is the paramount one. Will the benefits of face-to-face -face interaction, being in the center of action, outweigh the security and reduce commuting time of working from home and using video conferencing? I think the jury is out on that one. The second question is, what's the impact of increasing wage and parking taxes on 84,000 residents from the Western suburbs who've learned to work remotely? Healthcare and education is our second largest employment sector downtown, the largest for the city with 68,000 jobs. Healthcare portion of that is 74% of those jobs, 50,700 healthcare jobs. And obviously our hospitals have been the epicenter for crisis response. The largest concentration of essential workers are east of Broad and Center City and at the hospitals out in University City. I think we've long had a huge strength as a center for research and innovation. We're third behind New York and Boston in securing NIH funding. The University of Pennsylvania has been excelling as a regional leader in research expenditures. All our major institutions have been spawning new patent applications and new startups. Thomas Jefferson University Hospital has been excelling with telemedicine. They have a highly responsible outdoor testing site at 10th and Ludlow. And I think all of us are looking to a Philadelphia institution or startup to break through with a needed vaccine. On the education side of Eds and Meds, the education sector represents about 17,700 center city jobs. But the key issue here is that there have been 110,000 plus students each year in and adjacent to center city. Will they return to classes in the fall is a big unknown at this moment. That has huge implications for apartment and retail demand. And what about the large contingent of international students who are making up in some cases 20 to 30% of our enrollment at our universities? Higher educational institutions obviously have conferred a large number of degrees, a little over 31,000 in 2008. This has been an attractive feature to employees. Accessing that gradual, graduating pool of skilled labor is a primary appeal of a downtown office location. Conventions, leisures, and hospitality is our third largest employment sector with 38,000 jobs in Center City. These are a broad range of entry-level and mid-level jobs, and 80% are held by Philadelphia. All sources of hotel demand had been growing. The average daily room rate rose to over $200 a night at the end of last year. New hotels were opening or coming to completion. Hotel occupancy reached 76.3% and it mostly kept up with absorbing the new supply that we were adding. That was driven by public investment in the convention center, substantial investment in tourism attractions, long-term public and foundation investments in arts and entertainment. We currently have 243 major cultural institutions across Center City. Many of them are now facing proposed cuts in city support. A major source of demand for our restaurants were these arts and culture and hospitality demand drivers. We had 468 full-service restaurants in Center City and eating and drinking establishments was the second fastest growing employment category in the last decade behind only healthcare employment. Many major conventions for 2020 are now postponed. Some of them are already rebooking for 2021. International air travel has been suspended. And so occupancy in hotels in this crisis plummeted to zero to 10%. Open hotels are mostly housing essential workers. And in the hospitality industry, people are estimating at best a 40% occupancy rate over the next year. Now, re the recovery strategy clearly begins with drivable tourism that will come before conventions and before air travel. And I think our strengths here in the hospitality sector is we already have robust physical infrastructure for conventions and tourism in place. Most of our hotels are backed by national brands with 
And the hospitality industry is very well organized nationally and is an active force for lobbying for recovery funds. Our Convention of Visitors Bureau is just positioned this week with new leadership, and they have already adjusted and revised their budget for sales and marketing. Visit Philly is similarly gearing up a marketing campaign. I think the recovery will be painful, slow, but steady. Our restaurants are already exploring how to achieve socially distant seating, but that will require giving up seats inside. So many are thinking about extending outdoor seats into parklets and closed streets. Once again, we will need to think about how we use the curb lanes for this current crisis. CCD is strongly supporting the takeout and delivery strategy of many restaurants and businesses through our website and social media. And if all goes well, we hope to have a fall restaurant week in Center City. Retail is probably our most challenged sector. While it's only 5% of downtown employment, it is key to the vibrancy of Center City. We had net 90 national brands open in the last five years in Center City, but 76% of our retailers are regional and locally owned proprietors. That's been a strength but it's clearly been a challenge now and store closings have been the most visible sign of the crisis. Many locals have limited resources for recovery. Now CCD is beginning to talk to brokers and owners and retailers about what re role we can play along with the city and PIDC in a recovery plan. I think the conclusion right now is it's simply too early to tell what we can do and what we will need to do. Let me end then with downtown living and housing demand. I think the last 20 years, Center City has emerged as the fastest growing section of the city with a population over 193,000 people now. With 66,000 residents in the core, Center City is far from empty at this point. The population growth overall has driven a steady increase in new housing supply. We added just over 16,000 housing units since 2011. 81% of that new supply has been built in just 17% of the city's geography, clustered around centers of job growth and relying on transit connectivity. In the last three years, that demand burst through the boundaries of greater center city on up into Kensington, North Philadelphia, and far into South Philadelphia. It's been driven, as we know, by young professionals and empty nesters, with 45% of the residents in the core ages 20 to 34, 61% of our residents having a college degree. We know we've had a growing number of families with children and 75% of children living in Center City are attending one of our 19 elementary public schools between Girard Avenue and Tasker Street. Last year it was four, this year it was seven elementary schools. We already have neighborhood demand exceeding the capacity of the schools. A problem, but a good problem to have. Growth also drove demand for 30 supermarkets and these have become an essential lifeline now for center city living. But the clear challenge here for office, for retail, for residential is that density and diversity has been our core strength. And now density and proximity are very problematic. We're not likely to see crowds like this for a while in Center City, but I think it's very premature to declare the demise of downtown living. The advantages and amenities are simply too strong, assuming we're able to address the short-term health crisis in the near future. Lower Manhattan came back from 9-11 there will be continuing demand for downtown housing development and sites. Longer term though, I think we need to focus more on demographics. We've been saying for several years that millennials are not forever, that there are less 17 year olds than 27 year olds. If you look at this chart, you'll notice that we have benefited enormously from the growth of 20 to 34 year olds. But look more closely at those teal bars of those age 20 to 30. Since 2010, the number of 20 to 24 year olds in Center City has been steadily declining. This reflects the domestic contraction of college age students. So the return to classes is key, as is our ability to retain a greater share of college graduates in the next several years. 
we are also going to have to do a much better job of retaining people in their 30s and early 40s. Now, schools remain important, but Philadelphia must do much more than rebound as we come out of this crisis. We need to grow more family-sustaining jobs. Obviously, a competitive tax structure now matters more than ever if we're ever going to achieve more robust growth. It's worth then looking carefully at what is being cut in the proposed city budget in which parks, recreation, economic development, and other amenities are facing the worst cuts in that budget. When you have a diverse downtown economy, both our success and challenges in one sector obviously impact another. What happens in colleges affects housing and retail demand, which is just another way of saying we're all in this together. So looking forward, I think everybody wants to know when we will reopen. This is a graphic we created using the governor's standards for when Philadelphia can reopen. And the line across the bottom is when we reach an average of 50 cases a day. What you're looking at is the rolling average of the last 14 days, and we've been over 380 cases. So we clearly have some distance to go before we can reopen. For the immediate future, therefore, it seems that social distancing will remain the watchword. The return to work will be gradual. Many will initially work from home. I think we'll get accustomed to staggered work hours and days, and many new workplace procedures and protocols. Testing and contact tracing will wrap up, ramp up, but more slowly than we need for a rapid economic bounce back. I think we all have our fingers crossed for a rapid development of a new vaccine. As I look at this and as we talk about this, I think we've had, had several guidelines for how we make our decisions. I think we need to be responsive and forward-looking but don't make irrevocable decisions based on the mood of the day. That mood will change. That means remaining flexible and being nimble is essential and recovery will come and we will build on our strengths. As I noted in the commentary essay we posted on our website at the end of April, cities are resilient. They've rebounded from many crises and Philadelphia will prevail. So let me conclude with our game plan at the CCD. On March 17th, we confirmed that our on-street staff were considered essential personnel. CCD has always focused on improving the space between buildings, the walk from home and transit to work. So while owners and employers are focused on making workplaces safe, our core mission remains clean and safe sidewalks, restoring confidence in the public environment serving as a friendly, reassuring presence. We have 140 on-street staff working three shifts, seven days a week. They come from every neighborhood in Philadelphia. We've kept everyone working for the last two months. We've been pressure washing sidewalks with sanitizers. We've been removing graffiti from building facades. We've continued deployments of our community service representatives. We've continued our homeless outreach. We've continued routine sidewalk patrols. And because so many customary lunch places closed, we entered into a contract with Walla to provide lunch for all our on-street employees at CCD's expense. It's a very small way of us saying thank you very much for a great job, well done. We've taken inspiration too from a 1932 speech I remember that Franklin Roosevelt delivered just before he came, became the pre president. In the depths of the depression, he noted that the time demanded bold, persistent experimentation. It's common sense to take a method and try it. If it fails, admit it frankly and try another. But above all, try something. We need enthusiasm, imagination, and the ability to face facts, even unpleasant ones, bravely. So when graffiti appeared on boarded storefronts, we painted over it at 56 locations downtown. We then partnered with Mural Arts and contracted with 11 artists to make a virtue of necessity. At two dozen locations in the district, we've created an outdoor art gallery. We're now working on a plan with a new group of artists for a potential new citywide banner installation. We've continued all our fee-for-service cleaning contracts with the adjacent residential neighborhoods. 
We've added an overnight security patrol from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m., contracting with Allied Universal for vans, patrolling as a deterrent within our retail district. We've engaged formerly homeless individuals and returning citizens to remove graffiti from street furniture. Through a contract with the Avenue of the Arts, we've been planting new trees on South Broad Street. We've tended to the more than the 33,000 bulbs that we planted last fall in our parks at Cafe Cray on the Parkway at Dilworth Park, and where we benefited from a very cool spring with rain. At Dilworth, we left the winter garden in place until spring, and then when landscape work was permitted, we dismantled the topiary, removed the plants, and moved many of them to Cray Park at 16th. We're engaging landscape firms who have been approved for work to replant many of these parks. Back at Dilworth Park, with the winter garden gone, landscape contractors brought in new sod, and about one in one day they restored the Greenfield lawn, where no one can walk on it for 30 days, which I see as the one silver lining of having no one downtown at this moment in Dilworth. We're looking forward. We're considering our parks to be a place for early steps for phase reopening. We envision very low key attractions in public spaces, perhaps visually appealing installations. While scenes like this will not be immediately possible for reasons of health and safety, we're looking ahead 60, 90 days for socially distance events that we can do within our parks. We're already doing some of our programs virtually online as we're doing with Center City Fit, uh, which we usually do in Dilworth Park. We're looking ahead at Sister Cities Park, a children's park we opened in 2012, seeking to add more attractions for young children. We plan to expand the D Discovery Garden in the Northeast corner, adding a few more adventurous locations for kids. Before this crisis, we retained Brian Haynes and Studio Ludo to design new elements. A water spray at the top of the mountain, sluice gates to dam up the stream, a new platform with climbing nets, more things to do in the park. This week, Bittenbender, our contractor, restarted work. They've installed the beams for the climbing net. That shape is taking form. The new attractions for the kids will be there at the top of the mountain, and if conditions permit, we will reopen the park in July. So a huge thanks to all our on-street staff, our professional staff who are working remotely, and the contractors who returned to work and helping us get so many things done in Center City. All of them made everything possible that I just showed you. So we're looking at this moment to balance the practical with the inspiration. It's why we created a video of Philadelphia Shines Blue organized by BOMA and the Parkway Council and the city. You can view it on our website when you need a little inspiration, but then get ready to rebound. We want to see Center City come back very strongly. Thank you very much. I think we're going to be able to take some questions at this point. And those of you who have been able to ask questions, feel free to email me and we'll be back to you shortly.